Hello everybody, Randy Lanham here. I am going to take this video and explain all the fundamentals of holding the fiddle and the bow. So there's a lot of technique that goes into it, so let's get started. Uh, we're gonna actually start with our left hand. I got some notes here so I don't forget everything I'm talking about here. But we're gonna start with the left hand first, okay? So my left hand, I always wanna hold that neck of the fiddle, obviously. Even when I'm not playing, I just wanna keep that hand on the neck to support the fiddle. Um, so first of all, how do we hold this fiddle? We have a chin rest here that goes underneath our chin. You notice on the back of my fiddle, I have a shoulder rest. Those are very, very helpful. I do recommend people getting a shoulder rest. You, do, you can play without one, but they're very, very helpful. So I've got a shoulder rest on mine, chin rest under my chin. So the first thing I wanna do, again, my left hand holding the neck of the fiddle, I wanna make sure my fiddle is up. Kind of it's pointed straight out here right? I don't have it pointed towards the ground. I don't have it pointed up towards the air. I have it kind of in the middle, just kind of level here. And that's where I want to hold the fiddle. Notice the other way that I'm holding the fiddle is out to my left, just a little bitty bit. I don't have it pointing straight in front of me. I don't have it pointing all the way out here to the left. It's somewhere in the middle. Right there is a good spot to hold your fiddle. So I have it up. I have it level here. And I have it kind of in the middle between right in front of me and over to the left, okay? So I got my fiddle hold right. All right, next thing we wanna to try to do is talk about our wrist. When I'm holding my fiddle, I want that wrist to always be straight. Now, let me explain the reason why. So, I'll get rid of this bow for a second. So if I'm holding this fiddle with my wrist straight, all of my fingers are then able to reach all of the strings. Look, I can jump over there, Use all four fingers on the G string, the D string, the A string, and the E string. Now, if you notice something, if I bend this wrist and try to do that same thing, I can reach, I can't use my pinky hardly. I can reach the E, the A, I'm having a harder time reaching the D, really hard time over there reaching that G string, and my pinky is useless. But as soon as I straighten that wrist up, like this, and hold the fiddle, all of a sudden these fingers can arch around and grab all those notes, and all them strings. So it's very important to always keep your wrist straight. Now look where I'm holding the fiddle. So it's between my thumb and my pointer finger on my left hand here. And it's kind of, I always tell people a good place to start is the bottom crease of your finger and have it line up with the corner right here. This is called the fingerboard, this long black piece right here. All right. So the corner of the fingerboard right here, I'm just going to kind of put the bottom crease of that first finger right there. So you notice when I'm holding it, I don't hold it all the way inside between my thumb and finger. And I don't have it way up here like this. I kind of have it down to where that finger, bottom crease of my finger is lining up with the corner of the fingerboard. All right, so next we want to talk about, since we have our wrist straight and we're holding our fiddle correctly, we want to talk about the arch of these fingers. Okay, an arch meaning just that. I want to arch my fingers over to play the strings. Look when I'm on the E string, how my fingers are arched around. See that? So a lot of times beginners, one mistake that they'll make is that they'll bring their fingers in here kind of sideways to play these notes. You know, the side of their fingers like this. And, and when you do that, you can play the E pretty much okay and you get over to the A, then your fingers are touching the E string. If I go to the D, now they're touching the A and the E. So what I wanna to learn to do is arch my fingers. And so when I'm holding it correctly, I got my fiddle up out here between in front of me and out to the left, kind of in the middle, and I hold it up, straighten my wrist. I hold it correctly where the bottom crease of my finger lines up with the fingerboard. And then I am arching my fingers. If all that is correct, and your fingers should be able to arch around and using the tips of your fingers to push down. I hope that makes sense. The tips of your fingers is what you're gonna use to push on these markers. See that one, two, and three? How I'm using the tips and not the side of my fingers. I'm not coming in here pushing on the string sideways. 
I'm using, I'm arching my fingers using the tip to push down on these strings. Okay, now when I push the strings, you have markers on that fingerboard. Some of you may not have markers on it, and maybe you already play a little bit and know where your fingers are supposed to go. For any beginner, I recommend the markers to show that one, two, and three position. So it's open string means you pull the bow across the string without touching anything. You just play the string open. This would be a one pointer finger on the first marker. This would be a two middle finger on the second marker. And this is a three ring finger on the third marker. But you want to make sure that you play right directly on top of those markers. The thing about the fiddle is it does not have frets. When you don't have frets, that means your finger has to land exactly in the spot where it's in tune. So I have to line, I have to land rather right on top of those markers. If I get a little bit above or a little bit below those markers, I'm playing out of tune. So you really want to focus on those fingers arched, putting them fingers right on top of the markers. The next thing I want to cover is talk about the elbow. Now some people when they hold it, they want to stick that elbow out here to the left. But you don't want to do that. You want that elbow to just be comfortable and be right underneath of your fiddle, basically. You'll have it right underneath of it. And even some people, like myself, I rest it on my body here. My elbow's long enough. Some people, their elbow's not long enough, and they're not going to be able to rest that. And that's okay. But you want your elbow to be comfortable underneath the fiddle, somewhere underneath the fiddle. You do not want to hold that. Sometimes I've seen students stick that elbow out to the left to hold that fiddle up. That is so uncomfortable, and it's going to make it to where you can't reach all of your notes that you're supposed to. So I recommend not doing that. Keep that elbow relaxed and underneath the fiddle. All right, so let's go over everything one more time. So I got the fiddle neck with my left hand. I got the bottom crease of my finger lined up with the corner of the fingerboard. My fingers are arched, ready to play. When I do play, I go directly on top of the markers, one, two, and three. My wrist is straight so that I can reach all those notes. My elbow's relaxed and underneath of me. So, and the fiddle's up and over to my left just a little bit. So this hand is ready to go. Now let's talk about the right hand and arm and what it's supposed to do. First, let's start with holding the bow correctly. Now this bow, this piece right here is called a frog. It comes from the German word frock, which means a tightening device. And you can actually tighten your hair or loosen your hair. You ever heard righty tighty lefty loosey? Look at that. If you turn it to the right, it's going to tighten the hair. If I turn this to the left, it's going to loosen the hair. Everyone often asks me, well, how tight do I need my hair? Well, when I go to play, I'll go to the center of the bow because as you can see, that's the spot where the hair is closest to the stick. About the center of the bow, I want about enough space, probably a quarter inch, just enough space to where if I had a pencil or a pen, I could stick it in there. Sometimes when you say quarter inch, everybody's like, I have no idea what that is. If you can just think about a pencil or a pen, can I stick it in there between the, the stick and the hair in the middle of the bow? Yes, I can. That's a really good place to start. Now, the longer you play, some people like tighter bows, some people like looser bows. You can figure that out later, but this is a good place to start. Now, at the end of the day, when you're no longer playing, you're putting it up for the night, you want to loosen that. Now, if you loosen it too much, that screw will come all the way out of there. You don't want to do that. So I'm going to loosen that bow, and you're going to see how these hairs just get kind of loose. You see how they're kind of loose? That takes the tension off the bow. That's going to make the hair last longer. It's going to be make the bow last longer. Sometimes when a bow's kept tight all of the time, it can actually warp the stick. So you wanna loosen it at the end of the day when you're no longer playing. Uh, no matter what time that is, if you get done practicing, you're done for the day, loosen that hair it will help your bow last a lot longer. So obviously I'm getting up, I'm fixing the play, I wanna tighten that hair. I'm gonna turn this to the right, righty tighty. I'm gonna turn that to the right until the center of the bow has about a quarter inch in it and about the size of a pencil or a pen I can stick in there. Very good, we're ready. Let's talk about the hold. I like to hold my bow. Some people put their thumb on the bottom of the frog like this on that metal piece. I like to hold my fiddle with my thumb between the stick and the hair. This is how I prefer my hold. 
And I think you'll like this if you get used to it. But it is okay if you're not used to that to try it with your thumb on the bottom of the frog. Just cover up that metal piece. But I stick my thumb between the stick and the hair, not in this little notch. I'm actually between the frog and this little rubber piece right here, just right in the middle, kind of like this. And I'll just rest that thumb inside of there. My fingers wrap around the top of the stick. Now look how there's space between those fingers. See all that space between those fingers? You don't want them clumped up like this. You won't have as good as control. I want to spread those fingers out a little bit. Matter of fact, I want to put the middle finger and the thumb lined up together. You see that? They don't have to touch. They just need to be lined up. So after I put my thumb in there, put my middle finger lined up with it, then I'm going to drop the rest of those fingers around it, spread them out, and wrap these fingers around. Wrap these, wrap my pointer, my middle, and my ring finger kind of wrap around a little bit. Notice my pinky does not. You do not want to wrap that pinky around. Listen. A lot of people have bad bow holds, and here's what they do. They hold it like they're playing baseball, like a baseball bat. They wrap that hand around there. You do not want to do that. Thumb in, fingers out, spread out like this. That pinky is never wrapped, okay? That pinky is just resting on the back there. But if you keep it straight, you keep it from wrapping around, okay? All right, I think we got our bow hold ready. We got our fiddle hold ready. Now we're ready to make some music or make some sound anyway. So let's talk about, I'm gonna loosen this up just a little bitty bit. Let's talk about how this bow plays on the string. First thing I wanna do when I lay my bow down, I wanna play between the bridge and the fingerboard. Right there in the center is the sweet spot of this fiddle. That's where you're gonna get the best tone is if your bow stays right in the center between the bridge and the fingerboard. That's the sweet spot right in the center. I don't want to get close to the bridge. I don't want to get close to the fingerboard. I want to stay in the center. That's where you're going to get the best tone out of your fiddle. All right, so if I'm staying in the center, my bow stroke, now, how, well, first of all, let's go back to this. Before I even talk about a bow stroke, I want to talk about my right arm. Is it tense and tight? Because if it is, you're not, you're not going to get a good sound. That bow arm, a lot of beginners do that. They have a really tense bow arm and they're holding it so tight that they're making it even more squeaky. So relax that right arm, okay? Let's relax. Okay, you gotta hold that bow. You don't wanna drop, relax so much that you drop it. But relax that bow arm because when I add that bowing to the fiddle, a relaxed bow arm is gonna sound a lot better than a tense bow arm. Here's your sound if it's tense. You get a lot of squeakiness from a tight arm. So loosen up that arm, okay? I got the bow between the bridge and the fingerboard. Now when I go to move it, I'm just happen to be playing an E string open. It is an E string without pushing down on the notes. I want to move it. I'm Look how I'm playing kind of in the center of my bow. Watch this. So I'm not playing on the bottom of my bow. I'm not playing on the top of my bow. I'm kind of playing in the center. That's a good place to play. And I'm going to tell you the reason why. Look at my bow arm. If I'm way up here, if I start on the bottom of my bow, I'm gonna be using this part of my bow. Now look at that arm. It's not gonna naturally play smooth when it's scrunched up like that. Right here, in this area, if I play on the bottom, I'm not gonna be as smooth. You see that, how that works? It's the mechanics of your arm. So you get that arm down there, middle of your bow is a good place to start. And you're gonna kinda of play somewhere in the middle towards the top is the way that my arm lays out. This is a comfortable spot for me. Now, I'm not using the entire bow. It's rare for any song for you to use from the very bottom to the very top of your bow. Now, you could do some practices where you're doing those kind of strokes, but when you first start out, let's just try to get a smooth bow stroke just by using, I don't know, maybe half our bow. So watch this. I'm gonna go short and quick bow strokes. So if I go back and forth. Now the whole time I'm doing that, I'm trying to think about my right arm. Is it relaxed? If it's not, it's gonna be like this, okay? Relax that right arm. Look at the movement in my bow. I'm not going real slow because you get this sound. I'm moving it and I'm stopping my bow stroke and starting back the other direction fast because if I slow down, I'll get this. Hear that? Slow down, slow down, right? See, I don't wanna slow down. I want to keep that bow stroke moving. 
And if I do stop, I want to stop quick. See that? So you practice that right there. And all your practicing is playing an E string open, keeping it between the bridge and the fingerboard, and playing in the middle of your bow, relaxing your arm, and moving short and quick. Hope that makes sense. I hope that's helpful. Last thing I want to talk about in this segment about our right hand, our right arm, is talking about our bow stroke and keeping it straight. Now I told you you want to kind of play in the middle of your bow, but if I had that bow constantly going crooked like this, so if I go up this way, I'm going to get that squeak because I got crooked. I want that bow to stay going the same way that the bridge and the fingerboard is going. Does that make sense? Watch this. So what I'm doing is staying in the center and my bow stroke is straight. Now if I did not use my wrist when I came up like this, it would sound like this because my wrist is not bending up here like it's supposed to. So I'm going to get this sound. Because if you have a bow that goes crooked on a string, listen to this. Hear that? Or if I'm back this way too far, watch it. See that? I want to keep the bow stroke straight. How do you do that? Really, really difficult. They do actually have some bow guides you can buy. I've seen them on Amazon and different places. And it's a plastic piece that just fits right over here and it straps around the back. I recommend one of those because it forces you to keep that bow right in the center between the bridge and the fingerboard. And it kind of makes it, it makes it a lot harder for you to play with a crooked bow stroke. <laughs> so those bow guides are very, very handy. But even if you don't do a bow guide, you can also look in a mirror. So if I have a mirror in front of me and I'm turning around, I'm looking at that mirror. What I'm doing is looking in that mirror to see if my bow stroke is straight, okay? Make sure you're not doing this. Crooked this way, crooked this way. That comes from your arm going like this. You don't want it to move that way. I want it to move down while my wrist is bending, up while my wrist is bending. So I hope that's helpful. Let's go over that right hand and all that one more time, right hand and arm so that you got that down. So bow hold. I got my thumb between the stick and the hair right in front of the frog. I got those fingers spread out on top. I got the middle finger lined up with the thumb. My pinky is straight. Very good. Bow stroke, or uh, the tightness of the bow rather. Remember I got about a quarter inch in the center. That's a good place to start. It's tightened up. It's ready to play. When I add it to the string, when I put it on the string, I want to make sure it lands between the bridge and the fingerboard. My bow strokes need to be short and sweet. Quick and short. That's going to make them sound better. And the bow stroke straight and relax your arm. And you could just do that practice right there just to get a better sounding bow. Hope that's helpful.